Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elise, for that introduction. My name is Luz Chavez, and I'm a supportive oncology dietitian here at the University of Chicago. Um, I primarily work with GI cancers and also the neuroendocrine tumor patients. Before we get into specific recommendations for neuroendocrine tumors, I wanted to discuss why it's important for all oncology patients to focus on nutrition. It helps improve your tolerance to your treatment and therefore helps decrease your risk of toxicity from the treatment. Um, by also maintaining your muscle mass, you help support your immune system. Now this is important because it decreases your chances of acquiring an infection and also decreases complications um, from wounds. So if you have a surgery, for example, you're less likely to catch a wound infection. Now nutrition interventions are also important coupled with medications because it helps you manage your treatment side effects much more efficiently than with medications alone. And I'll discuss this further later. Studies have also shown that by being well-nourished, it helps improve your survival rate and also helps improve your quality of life at home. So I always like to tell patients a good place to start is with the American Institute for Cancer Research Guidelines for Cancer Prevention. There's several different points to these recommendations, but I'll just cover a few of the more important ones. They recommend to be at a healthy weight and for our oncology population, that either means either gaining weight or losing weight. They encourage you to be physically active, to limit your consumption of sugar-sweetened drinks, and then also limiting the amount of red meat that you're eating in a week. The recommendation is typically 14 to 18 ounces. And when it comes to processed meats, trying to avoid those as much as possible. They also strongly encourage a plant-based diet, which includes whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans. They also recommend that you limit fast foods and alcohol and also try to minimize the amount of supplements that you're taking for cancer prevention. They recommend that you get your nutrients from whole food sources. Now, this is a lot of information, um, but they do a great job of kind of showing this in practice. Now, they do encourage a plant-based diet, so two-thirds of your plate should be those plant-based sources, and that includes fruits, veggies, whole grains, and beans. And then the other third, should be your animal protein. Now, this type can be implemented by anyone who doesn't have symptoms. Um, after your treatments are done, once you're in the survivorship stage, and it can be implemented to some degree for those patients who are experiencing symptoms from their neuroendocrine tumor. So now I wanna cover more specifically some symptom management tips specifically for patients with diarrhea from carcinoid syndrome. Now the diarrhea from carcinoid syndrome is very different from regular diarrhea. Um, it happens multiple times a day, but not only does it, have it happen several times a day, it doesn't slow down at night. And then if you try fasting, it also doesn't stop. Um, many times antidiarrheals like Imodium may not work for this kind of diarrhea. Now this is a major issue, not only because it makes you feel fatigued, but it leads to dehydration and electrolyte abnormalities. A quick overview of some interventions that you could implement at home is eating small frequent meals to decrease the amount of volume that you're eating in one sitting. For carcinoid patients, patients in particular, a low amine diet is recommended, as well as a high protein diet. Now, as I mentioned before, staying hydrated is really important as well. Dry flushing is another common symptom that you can have with carcinoid syndrome. Now, these nutrition interventions may look a little similar. Um, they're very similar to the diarrhea interventions from carcinoid syndrome. You want to avoid having large meals. So small frequent meals is encouraged once again. You want to avoid any alcohol, spicy foods, and then you also wanna have a high protein diet and a low amine diet with dry flushing symptoms. Now, the reason for the low amine diet is that tyramine or dopamine, which are amines, they increase the catecholamine production and they stimulate more secretion of serotonin, which is what causes your symptoms from the neuroendocrine tumor. Now, with all this being said though, I do want everybody to remember that everyone is unique. You may have similar symptoms, 
but not every intervention will work for every patient, which is why it's important to meet with your local oncology dietitian. Now, just to briefly cover the low amine diet, as I mentioned before, amines will actually cause an excess amount of serotonin to be secreted by the tumor. Now, this secretion of serotonin is what leads to the carcinoid symptoms. Some significant sources, I'll just name a few, is gonna be any kind of spoiled protein food, um, aged or hard cheeses, any kind of yeast, um, so yeast extracts, brewer's yeast, hydro and also hydrolyzed proteins, um, but also fermented foods. Now, some moderate sources, which for some patients, um, they may have strong reactions to, but others may not, are like caffeine-containing drinks, coffee, chocolate, um, peanuts, coconut, Brazil nuts as well, and even raspberries, avocados, and bananas. Um, but as I mentioned before, I have some patients who may not necessarily respond to all of these. Now, I've mentioned a few times that a high-protein diet is important with all these symptoms. Now, the reason for this is even if you're not having um, carcinoid syndrome, your tryptophan level may still be low. The reason for this is that tryptophan is one of the nine essential amino acids. What this means is that you need to obtain it from food. Now, tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin, but it's also necessary for the synthesis of other proteins and niacin. So the reason it's important to make sure you're getting plenty of protein is because it can also lead to other deficiencies if it's being used for serotonin production. Niacin deficiency is one of them. Some of the symptoms that we identify with ni a niacin deficiency is diarrhea, dermatitis, which is essentially like scaly brown patches on your arms and legs. Uh, some patients may have symptoms of dementia, some nervousness, and even depression. And then if you're undergoing treatments, you may also be experiencing some weight loss or you may even have poor appetite. And if you remember, I mentioned that tryptophan is an essential amino acid, so it has to be consumed from your diet. So if you're having a poor appetite, this is just gonna further increase your deficiency because you're not taking in enough of the amino acid to produce niacin. Some food sources of niacin are animal proteins, so chicken, beef, fish, and liver. You can also find it though in fruits and vegetables. Some common fruits are avocados, dates, and even passion fruit. And then as far as vegetables, um, your best sources are gonna be mushrooms, broccoli, and asparagus. So tryptophan is an essential amino acid, so it has to be made a priority because you have to consume it. You know, it can, it can be found in chicken, turkey, eggs, sunflower, pumpkin seeds, just to name a few. There are other sources as well. Um, but this balance uh, that these uh, amino acids play, it's just one of the reasons why it's important to seek out an oncology dietitian. You know, this is, these brief explanations are just kind of the tip of the iceberg. And neuroendocrine tumor patients do have very unique needs compared to other oncology patients. Uh, thank you for your time.